Hi, Matt. I'm, my name's Jake. I'm a proud Gamilaro man from Maureen, New South Wales, and I'm helping a little bit with um, the series and, and, you know, getting the, um, really the premise of what's going on with things today, different movements throughout the world. Um, so, and, you know, it's, it's really an honour for me to sit here and to be able to talk to you and engage in this conversation. So I guess... You too. Thank you. Um, I guess, can you give me a little bit of an introduction about yourself and, and tell us what you do? Sure. So um, I've been probably for the last 25 years, I've worked in the film industry, film directing and writing and producing. Um, I decided that um, I'd, f I'd get a lot more out of being behind the camera, but also more importantly, um, telling different stories that are currently out there um, and I, I do like to do films about civil human rights or mental disease or things like that so um, you know I've found that over the years one of my best um, attributes is um, to tell original stories um, especially uh, about civil and human rights. And, and so Matt I guess one of the more famous stories um, that you've been involved in is the, the telling of of your uncle's story, Peter Norman, who was involved in quite a monumentous moment um, yeah. back in, in 1968. So can you tell us a, a little bit more about what, what happened with that iconic moment and also a bit of what led up to that moment? Yeah, so back in uh, 1968, um, Peter was um, a, a very good runner from Australia and, um, ended up getting into the Olympic Games um, as a 200 metre sprinter. Um, he went to those games uh, um, knowing that there were certain issues going on in 1968. Um, they had the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., the assassination of uh, Bobby Kennedy, um, and both of those for standing up for black rights. So he knew that there was a lot of issues with um, a possible boycott of black Americans um, of the games. And in that time, um, it was very politicized that um, black nations were going to boycott the, the games. And Peter wasn't really um, a fan of that happening because, you know, if, if he'd won a gold medal, then he would have been going up against, um, you know, not the strongest field. So he really wanted um, all athletes to be involved so that, you know, if he did win a medal, it, he was going up against the best in the world. And back, back then, um, the black athletes decided that instead of boycotting the Olympics, that they would actually um, go to the Olympics and win medals for their country. Um, that, that ended up being um, what they did instead. And during the 200 metres, um, Peter came second. And in fact, um, an important note is that as you literally had to break the, the Olympic or world record. Um, so it was an incredible feat to actually get into that final of the 200 metres. And, and Peter, Peter did that and not only did it, but um, won a silver medal against two of the fastest runners in the world, being Tommy Smith and John Carlos. And he split those two up. Just before the medal ceremony, um, both Tommy Smith and John Carlos uh, des decided that now was the time for uh, their protest. And so they, they discussed um, in the locker room what they wanted to do. You know, they wanted to wear black glove fists, um, black gloves um, on their fists. And, and unfortunately, John Carlos left his um, black gloves at the Olympic Village. And it was actually Peter that said, well, if you're only going to hold up one hand, why don't you share Tommy's? Then gave the famous, what was then known as the Black Power Salute uh, during that medal ceremony. So um, that was obviously a very uh, political and dangerous thing to do back in the 60s. Um, a lot of people don't know um, what Peter's involvement was, um, but Peter actually wore the Olympic Project for Human Rights badge, which was a badge that uh, most of the black Americans um, would actually wear on their chest. And so you, I guess you, you've touched on, well, one, how, how that was a very dangerous thing to do for black rights and, you know, getting, being involved in, in such a movement. And I guess also how the games that year I guess became very politi politicalized. Um, yeah. And so it, it was a very 
monumental thing for a, a person who who was non who wasn't a member of that community who wasn't black themselves to be involved yeah. I, I was just gonna ask, so what what do you think um was the response that followed from and i mean even though a lot of people didn't have a full understanding of um peter's involvement um in yeah. the in being on the podium and what led up to that but after people started to find out what do you think was the response to his actions especially i guess as, as a as a white person as a as a non-black person yep. when, when it all actually happened um it was so big back then that tommy and john got um sent home to america straight away or the following day um for their actions um peter was um taken into the room with um, the Olympic um, official from Australia, um, Judy Patching, and and um, his reprimand on the day was that, you know, consider yourself severely reprimanded, and then here's two tickets to the hockey. So on the day, it wasn't a big thing that he got reprimanded for. They knew that he was part of it by wearing the OPHR badge, but it was long after um, those Olympics that Peter found out um, where um, where the Australian officials were going to go with this. And unfortunately, um, because of his so-called misbehaviour at the 68 Olympics, um, he came up to the 1972 Munich Olympics. And um, even though he qualified during the Olympic year 15 times for both the 100 and 200 metres, he wasn't selected to go uh, to Munich because of his past behaviour. Later on in, in life, um, it wasn't just uh, missing out on going to Munich, but... Um, you know, in 2000, during our own Sydney Olympics, um, Peter wasn't invited in any official capacity to take part um, at our Sydney Olympics. And in fact, um, wasn't necessarily invited to those Olympics by Australia, but instead invited by the American team um, to, uh, to go to those Olympics and stay in the American team's um, quarters. So, um, you know, throughout his whole life, he was kind of snubbed by his own... Um, by his own membership in in Australian team and was never recognised. And then, you know, back back in 2006, um, I I brought out the film called Salute, um, which tells Peter's story from start to finish. And and that's when Peter started to get um, recognised. Unfortunately, Peter died during the filming of that um, that movie and, and so never got to see it but also never got to see the repercussions of that film um, where, you know, Peter was finally acknowledged um, by Australian Parliament um, for the wrongdoing done to him. And he won a medal for his, his part in human history and, and human rights history, and also a statue unveiling as well. So Peter had, after his death, um, he had all the recognition uh, he probably always wanted um, but unfortunately, he never got to see any of it. Do you think in in the that early early formation of uh, of the Black Lives Matter movement um, and you know civil unrest in 1968? Do you think um, Peter also reflected that same stance in in Australia, like on the wider like the white Australia policy and um, things like Indigenous rights movements? Um, Absolutely. And, yeah, see, back, back in 1968 especially, um, Australia was going through probably its, its worst racial issues, and that is, as you just mentioned, the white Australia policy was uh, still there. Um, he certainly knew of the rights of Aboriginal people um, being taken away from them. There was the stolen generation as well during that time. Um, and Peter grew up in a Salvation Army family, so he was very much aware of the way um, Aboriginal people were being treated here in Australia and did not like the way they were being treated. So, um, you know, there were a lot of protests back in those days, especially for black rights. And it wasn't just um, America that was going through that. Australia was going through it as well. I mean, our white Australia poli policy was horrific. And the fact that, you know, Aboriginal people weren't allowed to vote, um, they were just considered second-class citizens and Peter didn't like that at all. And I guess in, in that decision that was made to, to ban him, and I mean, I, I ultimately it was a ban um, from him competing in 
um, games to follow the 1968 games. Do you think there was any political involvement um, in that decision? Oh, without doubt. And, and I think we've got to look back at the times and, you know, the times are changing now and, and that's thanks to people like Colin Kaepernick and, and things like that, where um, people are now standing up for the rights of everyone. Um, you know, gay rights as well as uh, has been a very political thing. Um, and so it seems that now is the time to stand up for um, people that either can't stand up for themselves or for causes that require attention to the highest degree. And so back then it was very political and we did live in a, in a world that was very racist. Um, you know, the 60s were a racist time in our, in our history. So it was, it was time back then that people started to acknowledge that, um, especially in this country, that our own people um, were being treated differently. Um, and, and I say that in, with all due respect that, um, you know, our Aboriginal people um, are the owners of this land and we were treating them as they were nothing. And that to me is, is the, the deepest um, disgrace in this country that, that um, we've had to deal with over these years. And slowly, um, I think we are getting better, although we've still got a, a very long way to go. Definitely. And I guess, as you said at, at the start, with 1968, you know, 1968 is renowned as as the year of civil unrest or I mean if you look at history one of the years but that year in particular um, had a lot of events happen such as the assassination of Dr Martin Luther King, um, Bobby Kennedy, uh, heightened amounts of police brutality. From, yeah. from your perspective and the work you've done yeah. um, do you see any similarities or differences between back then? Because, I mean, we're talking about a, a year and a decade that was over 40 years ago um, to now. Do you, do you see any differences or similarities? I think um, back then, um, Tommy and John stated that um, they weren't necessarily standing up for black rights. They were standing up for human rights. And um, which was which was in large part um, a demonstration to say we are all equal and not necessarily um, about black rights, but human rights. They made that really clear. Today, we talk about um, Black Lives Matter, and that's, that's an important issue that, that um, can be discussed and dissected these days in that um, if we're to continue to say Black Lives Matter, we need to also come up with solutions to that problem. And one of the things that I've found um, that we're having to fight for these days is that, um, you know, you can chant Black Lives Matter all you like, but unless there's a solution, then all that chanting will do nothing. It'll just separate people again. So what I am hoping um, this year and, and in the following years to come is that we have a solution to the Black Lives Matter um, cause. My final question is... Do you think that we'll see that change? Uh, I guess e even in our lifetimes. I think by you actually interviewing me and you and I having a discussion, believe it or not, we are making a change right now. And and I think this is the issue that we've we've come up to um, in this day and age is that um, you and I are just two human beings having a conversation, and what we're doing is we're airing information and where we're trying to help people understand each other it's what it's what happens when two people can't have a conversation and stop having a conversation that the world turns upside down you know it's amazing to be able to sit down and, and have a conversation such as this and i think being able to have a conversation where there's no animosity where there's no hate where, yeah. you know, we can just allow everyone, all right, this is your point of view, this is my point of view, how do they work, what are the differences, how can we move forward? I think that's yeah. such an important part. Well, thank you very much for that, Matt. Um, thank you so much for having me. No worries at all.